What's going on, everybody? It's Blackjack. Welcome back to Crystalline. I think this is the last one I'm going to do before I um, wrap up tonight and probably get some sleep. Ooh, ugh, that's. Ooh, that alcohol's kicking. Knock on my door jolts me awake. Sit up straight in bed and barely notice a tiny yelp as the pongo tumbles to the floor. Hello? The knocking stops. It's Leanna. Are you about ready? No. I rub my eyes and blink and feeble rays of light outside. What time is it? It's past dawn. We need to get a move on if we want to make a good time. Oh, that's right, because traveling takes about half a day no matter where we go. Dawn, there's no good reason anyone should be awake at this hour. I attempt to lay back down in my bed when it, the knocking starts again. All right, all right, I'll be there in a minute. I swear, this is the same character. This is this is this is kind of similar to how Ace Academy started, where it was like, nope, not gonna get up. The noise stops. I yawn and stretch, then notice the pongo on the floor. What are you doing on the floor, buddy? Weren't you sleeping on the bed? I think I kicked it off. The pongo wiggles and shoots me an accusatory look. Poi, po -poi, poi. Oh, you can you can, you can do three poys. Okay. I glance at the slight indentation on my pillow and back at the blue mass on the floor. Sorry, I didn't mean to knock you off. He looks cautiously at me, then hops into the bed and up onto my head. Poi, poi. He nips at my hair and then jiggles. I guess that means he's forgiven me? I push myself to my feet and begin getting dressed. Once I've grabbed all my things, I push open the door and nearly collide with Leanna. Whoa! Are you ready to go? Yeah, sure. Did you just sleep in the same clothes? Yeah. Leanna nods and then leads the way out of the inn. I follow her through uh, town as we head north. It's a lot quieter than when we first arrived at the town as the town gradually begins to wake up. We don't run into too many people on the street. Although the shops aren't open yet, I can see the shopkeepers busy prepping for the day. Right before we reach the edge of town, a guard stops us. There's been heightened bandit activity reported on these roads. Hooray! We actually get to fight someone. Uh, Leanna Brow's crease. Are the roads closed? No, but until we get a handle on the bandit activity, we're advising everyone to stay in town. And the key word there is advising. It doesn't mean that we have to listen, but that you're advising. We can't stay. Again, the key word there was advising. It does not mean that we have to listen. Anyway. Where are you headed? We're headed to Illumia. The guard notices the sigil on, um, Liana's manipulator. You're a mage knight? She nods. As the guard turns his focus to me, I draw attention to the blade on my hip. Yeah, like that's really gonna do anything. He nods gruffly, then moves out of the way. Just be careful out there. Uh, no promises. Thank you. She motions for me to follow her. Once we're back in the familiar dirt path, I take one last look at Meadow Hill Village before refocusing on the road ahead of me. We're going to do some fighting. Our trek along the path is peaceful. The forest gradually awakens with bird song and the scuttling of woodland animals. Having grown up in the city, the sound of nature still startles me. Uh, still star... Yeah, that's missing... That's missing an S. Still startles me, and I give glance... Give, I glance at the uh, God reading. I can't. I, I glance at every rustle of the leaves. Lana, though, seems unfazed. Her eyes routinely survey her surroundings. Suddenly, she freezes. I nearly bump into her. What the? Nanda. Shh. Shh. Okay. I fall silent as she listens. When she speaks, her voice is a whisper. Did you hear that? I heard nothing. I strain my ears, listening for anything out of place. Then I hear the voices among the trees. Bandits? Oh, hi. Now that's crows. A strangled scream pierces the air, scaring a flock of birds into flight. Someone might be in danger. Uh, let's not do anything about it. All right, I guess we're doing something about it. Her previous uh, caution... Oh, 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 I see. Her previous caution abandoned. Leanna sprints towards the sound, and I follow at her heels. We both take cover as the trees open up, revealing a man in a trench coat surrounded by five bandits. Our, what time period is this? One more bandit lies motionless on the ground. A 
Upon seeing their fallen comrade, the bandits all achieve their weapons. Three of them hold long swords, and two of them point guns. The trench coat man doesn't stir. His dark hair falls over his eyes, and I can't see his face. You won't get away from us this time. <laughs> I guess this is the problem when everybody holds weapons. Take him out. To the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. By the way, give me all your money and everything you own. The man pushes open his coat and draws two guns as the bandits cover. Converge. Lana sets her draw. Stay here. Okay. As soon as the words fall from her lips, she races out from the trees. Her hair whips behind her, and her white coattails billow in a graceful arc. She moves faster than any human, and apparently can crash down like a truck crashing into, like, plowing straight into the ground. Uh, as if the air is pushing her forward instead of dragging her down. All right. Her gauntlet hand clenches as a blue sphere glows, then disappears as she smashes her fist into the nearest bandit. He flies away from her and crashes against a tree before crumpling into a heap. What great action that we're, 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 we're describing here and that I can't see whatsoever. A mage knight? I will actually give something to Ace Academy that's a little better than this one. Even though I kind of laughed at the silly, like, oh, look at these four generic robots thing. I'm looking here at this fight, and I'm not seeing anything. I mean, it's great that, like, the girl can move around, and she's got physics and all that stuff, but I, you're currently seeing nothing. It is, the, the key to a visual novel is the visual, you know what I mean? She must be with him. Or she's after the bounty. Take her out, too. The mysterious man fires a, a hail of purple blast of the bandits catching one of them in the chest. Leanna deflects the sword from another bandit with her own blade. I can't just sit here and do nothing. I have to help. Ignoring Leanna's command, I unsheathe my sword and charge in the battle. Oh, ha, ha. so this is what... Oh, that's right. I forgot everything is early access. Okay, so maybe that gets put in later. And so there's supposed to be a mini game right here. I was getting ready to say, like, are we actually going to do... Ah, oh, boo. I wanted a mini game. I get to choose if I win my fight or I lose my fight. Well, guess what? Winning! Lana breathes heavily as she surveys the bodies around her. She glances at me and the stranger who's still standing. Anyone hurt? Nope. I do a gentle pat down on myself and wince at my bruises. Nothing major. Leanna nods as she fidgets with her manipulator. Oh, hello. I guess you get to join our party now. The man stays silent as he inspects his gun. Now that I have a better look at him, I realize that although his fierce scowl makes him seem tough, he doesn't look that much older than me. His hair is a habit of falling, has a habit of falling around his eyes, but as he pushes it back, I notice a long score, scar cut across one eye. It's Squall from Final Fantasy VIII. Once satisfied, he tucks his gun back into his belt. You mean his gun blade? And gets to his feet. He nods at us. Thanks. Zack Spade. This is, let's change this to Squall Lionheart. Then he turns away. Wait! He pauses. Where are you headed? Why? Yeah, why? Why do, why do we need to know this? There might be more bandits around. We should team up if we're going in the same direction. Safety in numbers. Uh, this could also be uh, Final Fantasy XV, any of them. He studies us in stony silence. Then his gaze flickers through her manipulator and he relaxes slightly. Where are you going? We're headed to Illumia. Yeah, that's right. I, I completely forgot where we were going, actually. Me too. Oh, me too. Yeah, I was just going to walk away from you guys, and then I guess it would have been really awkward when we were walking the same path. All right, fine. Let's go to Lumia. I'm Zack Spade. Leanna nods. You're from the Mage Guild? You're from the Mage Guild? Yes, I'm Leanna. And I'm Penicillin Derude Sandstorm. Short for Penicillin Derude Sandstorm Rig and Mortis. Zack. Boy, boy. Oh, right, and there's this blob on my head. All of us glance at the little blue pongo who seemingly popped out of nowhere. And uh, this is our little friend. It's a little weird because if I get that they're trying to suggest that they're looking at the pongo by having them all look to the left. But if he's on me, shouldn't they be looking over 
here? I don't know. I see. Boy. The pongo blinks at Zack, who stares him down. The pongo bounces uncertainly. Boy? No. Ore. The Zack's unblinking stare never wavers, so the pongo scoots behind my leg for safety. Oh, it's on the ground. Oh, I thought it was on me. Now that introductions are over, let's get moving. Yeah, let's, uh, no, no more exposition. Let's get, let's, let's get train, train cup a rolling. Zack waits for us to collect our things, and once we're all set, we head back onto the road. Lana and I lead the way, the pongo keeping pace with us while Zack hangs a few steps behind us. What's up with that speed, girl? Explain. Lana, I saw you during the fight. How were you able to move so fast? Oh, I cast wind magic to manipulate my movements. Oh, but you can't cast magic mi a missile at the darkness. Okay. Oh, so like putting on a speed buff. They're small adjustments, like shifting the draft to move me forward, or using a breeze to help lift me during jumps. Okay. Damn, that sounds awesome. She grins. The next time you're lagging behind, I'll use my wind to give you a little boost. Oh yeah, that that would have been much very very useful a lot earlier. That would be amazing. I can already imagine myself running like the wind. Lana seems pleased by my reaction. Ask how Zach knew she was in the. Oh right, because it's, it's, it's this. I mean, I know what the answer's gonna be. How does Zach know you were in the guild, a mage guild? He saw my emblem. She lifts her arm up and points at the sigil on her manipulator. Uh, what exactly does the Mage Guild do? We investigate any type of magical anomaly. The Mage Guild in Havengard is actually headquartered in Illumia. Sort of like a police force? Leanna furs her brow. What is a police? Police? I knew it. Um, like how detectives go out in the field to solve mysteries. Detective? Um, a little like that. Oh, I guess that's something that they do understand. They don't understand police, but they understand detective. It now makes sense as to why both the guard in Metal Hill Village and Zack relax when after seeing Liana's emblem. Oh, yeah, he has a gun. So what type of gun is Zack carrying? You mean his discharger? Oh, that's what you mean by discharger. A gun. Okay. What's a discharger? I hear a sound behind us. Zack raises an eyebrow when I turn to look at him. Did you hit your head or something? I... Uh, I, I, I shut up. Leanna looks a little bit uncomfortable. He's not exactly from around here. Yeah, I just randomly kind of ended up here. Can I go back to the library now? Zack crosses his arms. He literally does. I see. And he just goes away. All right, there's pause. So, Discharger, Nani. It's a weapon that uses crystal spheres to power it. Okay, so it is a gun. Maybe? The spheres are bullets. Well, it's kind of like the magazine in some sense because it's used to fire bullets, or in this case, bolts of energy. Leanna looks uncertain. Although it made sense in my head, I can see why she might be confused. I can see why we're all really confused. I guess everything's gonna require a fucking explanation. Never mind, I got it, thanks. Sure. She smiles. I feel Zack's gaze on me, but his expression is hard to read. Well, it looks like that guard was telling the truth. There are definitely bandits on this road. Why would we not believe that? Yeah. There's something in her voice which makes me think she doesn't completely agree. What is it? It's just... Well, for bandits, they were pretty well equipped. That's a good point, actually. Um, yeah, if they're just bandits, they shouldn't be able to... Nah, I don't know. She stares hard at Zack, but doesn't. he doesn't react. What does that mean? Are they not bandits? Lana continues to look at Zack. I'm not sure. Is she just not sure if it's Zack's a complete pushover? They were bandits. Okay, great, all right. You just come in and you're like, they were bandits. She looks sharply at Zack, off, obviously caught off guard. Sure. That didn't sound too convincing. The subject drops, but I still feel a little uneasy. If those guys weren't bandits, then who were they? And why were they attacking Zack? The question circled my head and mind as the conversation lulls to silence. Lana leads the way through. She seems to have something on her mind. Zack trails from behind. He remains on heightened alert. We travel together for quite some time with no further interruptions. I can feel my legs starting to burn from all the walking. 
Lana squints at the sky. We should make camp before it gets dark. Oh, great. We get to sleep on dirt. Zack nods. There's a good spot up ahead which hides us from view. It'll still give us visibility on any intruders, though. Sounds good. Zack leads the way, and soon we reach the clearing. The three of us get to work setting up camp. I roll out my bedroll near the campfire and notice how thinly it spreads on the ground. Can this thing really be comfortable? I guess there's only one way to find out. I lie down on the bedroll and place my hands behind my head. This isn't as bad as I thought. A yawn escapes my lips. I could definitely fall asleep here. My gaze lingers on the night sky above. The moon hangs in the inky sky, dotted with so many pinpricks of silver light. They sparkle vividly as if trying to chase away the dark. I breathe out a breath of wonder as this nice music plays in the background. I never knew that stars could shine so brightly. I try to pick out a few constellations, but the star patterns above are unfamiliar. What are you looking at? You know, the galaxy sky. I quickly sit up at the sound of Leanna's voice. She holds two steaming bowls in her hand. I accept one of the bowls with a smile as she sits beside me. Also, where did you pull bowls from? Just admiring the sky, this place is really beautiful. Back where I live, you don't get to see many so many stars. How come? It's earth, pollution, smog, the whole tearing the holes through the ozone layer, all that shit. Light pollution. Our cities are filled with so much light that it drowns out the stars. That too. Leanna gazes thoughtfully at the sky. Right. It's a little harder to see the stars in town than it is out here. I shake my head. That's not the same. Some nights I don't see the stars at all. Her eyes widen in surprise. Then she places her chin in her hands. A night sky without stars. Yeah, it exists. She looks at me. What's your world like? Uh, you know, way more advanced than this. We have these things that drive around called cars. They could have gotten us to the next town in like, I don't know, 20 minutes. It is really good tech. It's bad. Humans are a plague to the planet. Different, but more or less the same. It is really cool tech. It's really different. We don't have any magic, but we have a lot of technology instead. What sort of technology? Things like cars. What's a car? Oh, oh, it's a means of transportation. With a car, we could have made the journey from uh, the Meadow Hill Plains to Meadow Hill Village within half an hour instead of half a day. Wow, called it. It's at 20 to 30 minutes, right? Leanna looks intrigued. You have an animal that can travel that fast? See, no, it's not an animal. It's a machine. No, it runs off gas or electricity depending on what type of car you have. So it's like our carriages, which are powered by crystals. The more energy it uses, the faster it goes. Oh, you have one of those. And you didn't use it. You, you didn't think bringing that along you along with you was a good idea. Okay. Uh, okay. I mean, if, if, that, if that's how your brain works. Something like that. We have airplanes, too, which fly in the sky so we can have faster travel to other areas of the world. Humans who can fly? Okay, no. Lana's eyes grow in wonder as she grins. What else do you have? The interwebs. It's a wonderful place where so many things can happen. I miss a we have mobile phones too, but the interwebs. Well, the internet is pretty cool. What can you do with an internet? <laughs> what can you do with an internet? Hello, ma'am. I would like to purchase one internet for home, please. The internet is essentially just a massive network. You can do basically anything you want on there. She still seems confused but interested. It lets you communicate instantly with people from other countries, research, watch funny videos, play games, check your finances, watch porn, check your finances. Although, if I had to guess, its most popular use would be Leanna Blinks. Maybe the wild adventures of tentacles are better left unsaid. Okay, now I didn't say hentai and tentacles, but I mean, you could have just said porn in general. That does sound like you can do basically everything. Yes, you can. You can even record yourself. Her eyes are still wide. She speaks slowly as if still processing all of this information. I think I might have overwhelmed her. She tilts her head back and returns her gaze to the sky. Underneath the moonlight, her pale skin seems to glow amidst the darkness. Her face softens as she smiles. You're right. The stars really are beautiful. We fall into a comfortable silence as we enjoy the tranquility of the night. After we finish eating and cleaning up, Zack approaches us. Oh great, hi Zack. nice to see you. 
It's getting late. Yeah, how about you go to sleep? Leanna nods. I'll take first watch so you can rest. Oh, we're doing, oh, we're, oh, we're doing shifts, okay. All right, I'll take second watch. And I'll take overwatch. I guess that just leaves me with the third. Zach stares on Blake again me while Leanna coughs nervously. That's okay. We had an early start and I'm sure you're tired. We should rest up and sleep through the night. Yeah, I'm only tired because of the alcohol though. And also getting off of work. Uh, she's right. Uh, whatever. All right, fine. You know what? We'll give her a little. Okay. All right. Thanks. She smiles warmly. Good night, then. All right. Just do not leave me here in this area just to go to sleep, and then I'm dead. Good night. Zach nods, and Leanna crawls into her bedroll. As she lies down, Zach positions himself against a tree and takes a seat. Uh, fine. If we're going to be traveling together, I should make an effort to get to know what kind of person he is. I walk over to Zach. Hey. Hmm? Mind if I sit? He gestures for me to join him, so I do so. Obviously, I'll have to lead the conversation since this asshole doesn't want to talk. So, weather. Great, 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 great talking point, penicillin. Zach stares at me. All right, let's switch gears. No, that's Ace Academy. Um, are you a cat or a dog person? Is this going anywhere? Yeah, I don't think he knows what those are either. I sigh. I'm trying to build up some trust here, but you gotta meet me halfway. Zach looks away. Great, I guess he doesn't want to talk. I'm gonna go to bed dog. then. Oh, you do have dogs, okay. What? I prefer canines. Oh, so that is a thing here. Oh, cool. The silence creeps in again. You don't want to be like, hey, I like dogs too, or oh, fuck dogs. Cats rule, which is false. Dogs rule. So, we're all going to Illumia. Yep. Uh, what brings you there? I'm meeting someone. Nice. Oh, a friend? Someone from work. Uh, work friend? What do you do? I'm a mercenary. Oh, well then. Uh, good thing we picked you up and we're gonna drop your ass right back off then. This explains so much. It all makes sense now. What does? Everything about you. The angst, the hard-boiled exterior, the frequent cold shoulder, the fact that bandits were going after you. You're totally the brooding main character from one of my JRPGs. It's like I said, this is fucking Squall. Come on. What are you talking about? He stares at me and I smirk. That's exactly how one of those MCs would react. So, why are you going to Illumia? I'm bored. <laughs> Leanna's taking me to the Mage Academy so I can learn how to cast magic and shit. He studies me again. Are you a mage? You don't have a manipulator. Not yet. I shake my head. No, I'm looking for answers. He nods in understanding and doesn't pry, although I try to stop it. A yawn escapes. You should get some sleep. We have an early start in the morning. I agree, I really should get some sleep. That sounds familiar. I push myself to standing. Good night. He nods. I lie my own down in my bedroll and scooch over around to get comfortable. I try closing my eyes to sleep, but something still doesn't feel right, because it's the fucking Pongo. Oh yeah, I need a pillow. Pongo, get over here. Sitting up, I look around for anything I can use. My gaze falls on Pongo, who now rests beside Leanna. Pongo pillow, there we go. This is happening. Psst, Pongo. The Pongo blinks open bleary eyes but perks up when he notices me. Boy? Come here, buddy. Boy, boy. Yeah, he aptly bounces over. When he comes within reach, I make a grab for him and plunk him on my bedroll. He squeaks in protest as I lay my head on him. Boy. Ah, deal with it. Like a slippery eel, he wiggles himself free and bounces back to Leanna's side. Well, now I don't have a pillow. No, Pongo. Boy, boy. He glares suspiciously at me. Boy. He turns his back to me and cuddles against Leanna. Hey, hey, hey. You were my cuddle buddy first. Don't get too mad that I kicked you off the bed. I sigh. Well, I guess I have no choice but to make do with the uh, being pillowless. Alrighty. Lying back down in my bedroll, I close my eyes and eventually drift to sleep. It's so actually probably what I'm going to do right now so I can rest up and get ready for a long day ahead of me tomorrow where I'm going to be doing some streaming on my sports channel and then uh, probably doing a few more commentary stuff and preparing a whole bunch of shit. 
Um, but thank you guys so much for uh, enjoying the first three episodes of Crystalline. It's been fun. Um, I've got a birthday ahead of me, especially later tonight. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're brand new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Leave a comment, drop a like, and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye and good night. No, really. Good night. Woof. All right, I got to save.